What do you thought? Actually, Barry, I might uh, like to ask something, if that's right. Um, I yeah, just sure. wonder how complex you think uh, scenarios could be made, because it's one of the interesting things I've been reflecting on is, yeah, we often think that we've got issues that are very complex, uh, but I often wonder whether the students get more out of it if we keep it relatively focused uh, rather than making it too complex, um, especially when we get them to do these sorts of online activities. So I wonder whether you had any thoughts about that, about at what point do you sort of uh, diminishing the pedagogical value of doing these things because we actually just make them too complex? Yeah, well, um, good question. Uh, good question, Jeffrey. And certainly the literature I've read, uh, the literature I've read on this um, would suggest that uh, when you look at uh, going through scenarios in terms of cognitive load, uh, if they're not scaffolded well, um, they can be just far too complex for students and they can get lost and give up and have a, have a very negative experience. And uh, I, I think the answer myself is, is it's in the scaffolding. It's in, um, it, it is in having a narrow focus, at least initially, so that uh, students get a good grounding, perhaps some, you know, some fundamentals. And then progressively, uh, perhaps it makes things a little harder and complex. Uh, this is something I do in the Apple scenario. I mean, each of those scenarios is, is more complex than than the next. Uh, not necessarily deliberately, but that's just the way it, it happens. You know, as the season progresses. And um, yeah, so I do think students, having done the first one, which is a little simpler and, and things are quite, you know, a little more clear cut, does actually help with the later ones where you're starting to get some more advanced concepts in. Anyone else got any comments they'd like to make or any other questions they'd like to see? Yeah, Bruce. Bruce, have you got a comment? Uh, Bruce, if you're talking, I don't think we can hear you. Um, so are you holding the holding the mic down or holding the talk button down? Can you hear me now? Yes, no, I haven't heard. No, yeah. Oh, my apologies. So I'll, I'll repeat that. Uh, as I was saying, it's my first exposure to Wimba, so uh, I just realised I had the uh, Logitech button pressed and it wasn't working. Uh, getting back to the scenarios, and obviously there's a, a, a fair amount of time in getting familiar with the setup process, but one of the issues is that once you've got a scenario and you're very happy and you've refined it, if you're using it for final assessment, what's the time percentage of time you have to allocate to go back and update it so that next year you get a slightly different scenario otherwise you can guarantee that the information will trickle down from one group to the next and and all I'll do is rehearse the the uh, scenario and then but you need to change it and of course sometimes that's not easy to change it enough to be a different so percentage of your effort do you have to repeat each year if you go to use this process yeah, that's a good um, uh, that's a good point, uh, Bruce. Um, I know in the vet uh, the the vet scenario that they use for exams, um, they've actually got uh, they call it a virtual vet hospital template. So what they have in that uh, in SBLI is essentially all the hospital work with all the tests that uh, you probably ever want or most of the tests that you'd ever want for animals. And with the results of those tests are all de default values. Okay, so uh, is it, when I, I say default values, I mean the values that are there are with the normal range for healthy animals. So when they come to developing a new scenario, all they have to do is change the values uh, that relate to tests that reflect the, the disease or condition that the animal's got. And actually, it's not very, um, it's not very much time at all. They really just have to change a few values. All the other ones they can just leave as is. So uh, my vet, uh, my vet academic tells me that he actually doesn't actually take him that long. So uh, he's got a bank of these things. He's got some practice ones, and uh, yeah, he'll be bringing out new ones uh, for the exam. It doesn't take him that long. It's a little, a little, it's a little the same with my orchard one. Uh, my orchard one, uh, 
I haven't, I haven't run the second year of that yet. Uh, but really, I just need to tweak it a little bit. Uh, you know, change one or two sprays around, um, one or two values around, and, and you know, on the monitoring screen. And uh, you're looking at a different recommendation. So, so the way I envisage updating those is, um, you know, just putting in a little tweak uh, now and again for the next uh, next assessment. Um, for my diagnostic ones, I've got a bank of them, and I tend to mix those around a bit. Uh, and so, um, once I might have a new one every year that I'll, I'll throw into the mix. Uh, I'm gradually building up um, uh, my certain numbers. Uh, it certainly is something to consider. Uh, it's probably not as um, not as urgent or relevant for me because my students tend to be uh, 300 level, so they're third year students. It's normally their last year of the degree, so they um, you know, they leave. Uh, there are a small number of students. Um, you know, you might get some stuff trickling down, but it's not like uh, a lot of, say, 200 first years that are just dying to get into veterinary science. And you know, if, if, if they can get their whole, lot, get their hands on a model answer that's going to be used for assessment, they'll do it. So, um, yeah, diff different issues there, I guess. Thanks for that. Anyone else got any thoughts? I know one of the things I always get asked um, when I'm talking about scenarios and I show some of them is, um, you know, how long does it take to, to write a scenario? That's, uh, that's often a question. And um, it's, a, it's a very difficult one to answer because it's a bit like how long is a piece of string. It, um, you can write very short, sharp scenarios that don't take much time at all. Uh, we can have big, huge, you know, complex um, dramas that, you know, take up a third of a course, and you know, students go through pieces of them uh, every week. So it's really not a, a very easy question to to answer. Um, that particular one. That's another little, um, uh, it's not a pearl of wisdom, but it's an observation that I've made uh, working in this area for some time, and that is that um, uh, a lot of the time and effort when you're developing these scenarios, I've found, is, is with multimedia. And, uh, you know, you've, you've often got to find someone to film it, or you've got to have someone to edit it. Um, certainly done well, it can lift scenarios considerably. But the advice I give uh, academics here that are looking at planning a scenario is, first of all, is it absolutely necessary? And uh, in some cases it will be, if you're looking at um, maybe body language or behaviour uh, or movement. Uh, but in many cases it's not absolutely necessary. And um, my recommendation then is often um, design, your, design a scenario and just have it in there as a possibility and if you get time, uh, you know, perhaps do some filming and put or, or find a video, put it in. But um, you know, leave that, leave that. Uh, you know, as one of the last things, particularly if it's a, if it's cheap, um, you know, you invariably find that uh, deadlines are coming up. You run out of time to get the scenario in the form that you would like, um, but it's okay. Uh, so um, yeah. Don't start with the complex stuff, in other words. Uh, start with the easy stuff. Get something that's workable and um, add these other things later. You can always add them next year. 